Hello, I'm Mark Hall with the Alabama Cooperative Extension System, and we're talking about drip irrigation today, and with me is David Harkin, the Assistant Superintendent here at the Tennessee Valley Research and Extension Center. David has been working with drip irrigation since, what, 1997? Yes, sir. A good long while. David, tell us about your experience with drip irrigation. I've, I've had more experience with uh, center pivot irrigation. To me, that seems like the gold standard, but Drip irrigation is so much more flexible for weird shaped fields. Tell us about drip. Uh, yeah, we started uh, here in 1997 with drip irrigation, uh, subsurface drip irrigation. And uh, we, we wanted to see how well it would work in the Tennessee Valley. We've got a lot of center pivot irrigation in North Alabama here, but we also have a lot of irregular shaped fields, small fields, narrow fields, uh, corners of some fields. And we wanted to see how it would work in this area, in this soil type. Um, we buried some in 1997, been running experiments on it since then. We've had good luck with yields, yields uh, comparable to the center pivot. Um, and overall, it's been a good product for us, Mark. How about water usage? Is it, uh, I've heard that drip irrigation uses less water, so it's more efficient water uses. Is that true or not? Uh, it's not entirely true. We don't use any less water with the drip irrigation. In fact, um, sometimes we've used more just because we could put it out there. Uh, with drip irrigation, you get better uniformity and better distribution of your water uh, in the field because you don't have um, water drain into low places in the field as much as you do with, with overhead irrigation. Uh, your high parts in the field, your hilltops, they get just as much water as the, the lower portions of the field, lower elevations. Um, but, but overall, we've probably used as much or more water with our drip irrigation than we have uh, overhead irrigation. David, uh, tell me about uh, catching problems with drip irrigation. I've noticed on overhead irrigation that you'll have one nozzle and you got this crazy sprout of water going off somewhere. How do you find your problems? I mean, if you've got anything you're using is going to break. I mean, that's almost everything breaks. How do you find your problems when it's buried? Um, we've got water meters, uh, flow meters on all our uh, fields here that we have the drip irrigation in, so we can monitor our flow through a flow meter. But also, if you have a leak, um, a significant leak, the water's going to make its way to the top of the ground, and you'll see it uh, either, you know, if you're scouting your, your crop for insects or if you're just driving through with a piece of equipment, you'll usually find it if you have a leak. What crops would you use this on? Is it more high value uh, like uh, strawberries or would it be for cotton and corn and traditional field crops? Uh, we use it on cotton and corn and soybeans here. Um, traditionally, it's been used in vegetable production uh, with your higher uh, higher end pro uh, crops like that, but we've used it, like I said, since 1997 on cotton, corn, and soybeans, and it's worked real well for us. Acreage-wise, David, how big a field could you put this in? How sloping a field? How uh, uh, small a field would it be economically justified to put in drip irrigation? Do you have a feel for those kind of issues? We've got some, some single runs of the drip tape that are 1,250 feet long on rolling terrain and it works fine. The water is fed from both ends of the field, not just one point. And so uh, that works real well for us. Thank you, David. Any other issues on drip irrigation? We've talked about maintenance. Have we talked about cost? How does the cost of drip irrigation compared to center pivot or linear or traveling gun? Um, when we installed this, uh, the cost of the drip tape was probably $200, $250 per acre more than the center pivot. Um, that didn't count developing a water source. It was strictly just for the product. How, what's the life expectancy of, 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 of a drip irrigation pipe once it's buried in the ground? Uh, the drip irrigation is a polyethylene uh, tubing, so in theory, it is, it is uh, a lifetime is, is you know, forever um, because it's non-biodegradable. Now you do have some, some maintenance issues you have to deal with. You have to keep uh, it flushed. You have to keep it treated with uh, chlorine and or acid to keep the emitters clean, keep them from plugging up so you don't have a failure. Uh, you have some issues with possibly some mechanical damage from either equipment or, or stalks, you know, from a, from a crop such as cotton. 
Um, we've seen damage from varmints, uh, rats burrowing in and chewing the tape up. Insects are a problem sometimes. But all these things, you know, you just keep a check on. You can treat with an insecticide to keep insects from, from damaging it. Um, and you just you, you try to stay off your tape with, uh, with the equipment if possible. Um, but, but like I said, we've had it in since 97, and it's still working and still working properly. David, I, I appreciate your help. Thank you for uh, sharing your knowledge of drip irrigation. We have some other irrigation videos. Look at this website that we have posted, and it'll show the, our other irrigation videos. We have other ag-related and home economics and 4-H and all kind of interesting videos. Please tune in and look at that. Thank you so much for watching this video.